We love music. You are locked into Six Towns Radio. The power of love. That is Gabrielle Appling on Six Towns Radio. It's been Musical Mogwai of the Week. We'll have a brand new one on Monday. It is time to go to the phone lines. Up in Stoke tomorrow, as part of the Laugh Out Loud comedy night, Jim Tavray is performing, and he's on the phone right now. How are you, Jim? I'm great, thanks, Terry. I've just driven up from Torquay. I'm on the way to Hull. I need to get a better agent. (laughs) Definitely. I've noticed, like, a lot of comedy tours, when we have people on the phone, that always happens. It's never Manchester to Stockport to um, Leeds to Sheffield. It's always, like, all over the place. well, like I say, it is if you've got a better agent. <laughs> but uh, it, it's actually, I'm, just doing a, I'm doing a little run up north called the Great Northern Run, a little northern tour, except I did have the one last night down the south coast there, so it's a bit of a, you know, an odd one. That's a private thing. But, um, yeah, and it's it's Hanley, isn't it? I yeah, think. yeah. Um, have you been yeah, up to Stoke before? I'm, I'm, uh, but, well, no, but I had a tattoo at Gentle John's. Is he still there? <laughs> yeah, he's still in operation. Yeah, he's still there. Yeah, yeah. That's actually true. I've got, uh, got a lion's head, with, and I've got to go back and get my money back because the eyes are cross-eyed. <laughs> Clarence, you could That's call it. him. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Gentle yeah, John's. Memories. Yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll have a word next time I pop in. Jim Tavare <laughs> uh, needs his tattoo. So he, well, you were at school not far from here, weren't you? You were in school in Northwich in Cheshire. In Northwich, uh, doing art actually briefly, and then before Poynton uh, School, I, was, I, was, I lived there for about ten years between the ages of seven and seventeen. Yeah, because I was looking at some of your biog, and obviously I know quite a lot about you. But uh, one fact that I loved uh, is that you toured with the Matt lads back in the day. Oh, that must have been what? Well, I don't even yeah, know I words can't, can't describe it. Uh, it's it, yeah. I, well, when I my, I've always had the theory that you should do any gig you possibly can find. And one of the gigs that I got offered in the early days was uh, supporting them um, in, in Macclesfield. And it was it was around the time when they first introduced uh, plastic beer mugs. And they would get these chucked at the band. And uh, and they'd get literally hit on the head with uh, plastic cups. And then they'd, they'd bring me on again because their amps got filled with beer. And they'd bring me on. And I can't begin, I can't tell you on air what, how they introduced me, but so that was my, you know, my first early days of learning comedy the hard way. Yeah, for the listeners, the Matt Lads were sort of a, a rock and roll band from the uh, 80s and 90s. Um, <laughs> they swore yeah. quite a lot, didn't they? And uh, the, the gigs yeah, were famous did, yeah. for breaking out into fights, uh, as I remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and right. beer thrown out. Yeah, yeah, I wonder what they do now. I bet they've got office jobs, haven't they, the Matt lads? I think one of them runs a record shop down that, down that way somewhere, Macclesfield. Yeah, yeah. And um, but then I worked I worked for a bit in Congleton as well, uh, a haulage company, and <laughs> strange things like that. And then I went down south. I've been there many, many years. And actually now I live in uh, Los Angeles. Oh, all wow. places. So, <laughs> uh, I've been out there three and a half years. I did a TV show out there called Last Comic Standing and then progressed in the round it's kind of like an x factor for comics yeah and progressed and then just stayed there in the end i've just i've been in a few tv shows out there acting so so i I like to do a couple of months here though you know at the end of the year about now yeah just coming up to christmas yeah the comedy tour always goes down well then i think people want a bit of a laugh just before christmas that's what it is but i remember um when you did Last Man Standing, I can remember there was the little clips with other comedians and ricky gervais was one of them and he's described you as funny but weird. Yeah, weird, and uh, he, he's, everyone should have a picture of me on their mantelpiece to keep the kids away from the fire. <laughs> yeah, that was the one. He, but I wrote a show with uh, Ricky way back. In fact, uh, he had his first break on TV in a show that I uh, made him produce and was in called The Jim Tavare Show, and he, he came along to the studio with a pile of scripts because we were looking for jokes, you know, for me to do. And he was one of the writers that came in with just an enormous pile of stuff. And uh, I couldn't learn it all, so I said, hey, Ricky, do, you want, do you want to be in this as well? And he was in half of it, doing bits and bobs, and then that's what led him to do The Office. Ah, yeah, very interesting. Uh, because you've worked with a lot of comedians, uh, you know, back in the day, I suppose... Um, the writing process, because a lot of people think, you know, that certain shows are written by the performance, but that's not always the case. A so comedy uh, can um, sell that way as well. You know, comedians can make money about writing, but, you know, you've done it all, haven't you? 
Uh, I'm mainly mainly being a comic, but obviously when you get your own show, you need to put your own ideas in, and, and these days you have to do everything, writing and performing. Um, uh, but it's a small world. The English comedy scene is very small. All the comics know each other at pretty much every level. So, uh, you know, you've always got to be nice to everyone because you never know who's going to explode <laughs> onto the scene next week. Yeah. Um, you were one of the first, well, one of the first I remember, comedy musicians with your double bass. Of course, there's quite a few now, David O'Doherty, Tim Minchin, on the old Joanna. But um, when your act was first seen on TV, it was so original. Uh, I did, yeah. I've always liked to put a bit of music in. Um, but more more or less, really, the bass that I use is more or less like a prop. And so I don't rely on it heavily. In fact, uh, when I first started, I used to do like half an hour and then just ne- never played. He just held, stand there holding this bass as a great big sort of, thing, you know, a double act, really, if you like. And uh, right at the end, I'd do the Jaws theme and then explain I've come all the way here with the double bass for one joke. But then gradually, over the years, I've kind of actually improved as a player and then started incorporating it and doing whole routines and then dressing up like a guy from the orchestra. And that was my character, and that's when I felt it kind of got, yeah, that's when it worked, that that was when it was right at that point. Yeah, <laughs> I love it, I love that. I can remember at one point, um, Channel 5 uh, champion what's now um, something that's on TV quite a lot, you know, the comedy store things, and um, you run quite a lot on them back, you know, in the late 90s. Oh yeah, I must have done. A lot. I've lost track of all the shows I've done here now. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm still, I still have that same image. But uh, I think people sometimes the only downside to having a trademark like that, a bit like Jack Benny used to have, I suppose people think of you as doing the one act. But actually, the the material changes completely every couple of years anyway. So, and I think that's what people don't always realise. Uh, they think it's a one act kind of thing. But actually, I'm a stand-up like everyone else, just with a kind of unusual identity, if you like. Yeah, that's one way of putting it. So you live in L.A. I've seen that, um, you know... You've yeah, been... I'll, I'll, Go on. I, well, no, I've, just, I've been out there, I think, uh, for near close to four years. done a couple of TV shows. One of them was Californication, uh, in which I was a regular on that. And then another show called Chuck, which is a kind of spy comedy drama. Then I just made a couple of horror films, believe it or not. There are two or three all coming out around now. Um, one of them is called Real Evil. Um, and uh, another Killjoy and another uh, Bloody Homecoming. And it just, it's just because I've got that kind of face. So I've <laughs> been doing a few villains out there. Uh, in America, though, um, you're famous for a TV ad, aren't you, as well? Uh, I would... Uh, uh, kind of, yeah, <laughs> kind of. Actually, that is a, a, a tribute to a, a guy who looks like me. So what I'm doing there is actually uh, d- copying uh, a famous advert because I, uh, 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 I look like a guy from the advert. So I played on that, and it became kind of a, an internet sensation when people thought I was actually the guy, but <laughs> it's not, not in fact me. Yeah, because it's, oh, I've seen it because I saw the bit of stand up where you said, you know, that you've done, um, you know, the last man standing, you've been in these TV shows, but people think you're that guy. <laughs> they do in America, yeah, particularly. And I caught, I tour the colleges a lot out there, and um, and that that um, that character, I, I usually do that in, in the show. And then also, uh, because I was in a Harry Potter movie here, that's absolutely enormous in the US, and so I signed the character, Tom the Innkeeper character photos for the kids when they come up afterwards. And, but I've had a, a, a long run tour out there for a pretty much like ongoing college tour. And um, that's, that's why, so I leave LA, you know, when, when it's quiet and then go on tour again. So uh, it's, it's pretty, keep pretty busy. Yeah, it's very interesting, you know, with the TV, with the films, and, you know, the fact that you still like to do the touring as well, because, you know, that is a, a staple of the comedian game around there. Is it different now than when you set out how you do all the gigs? Well, it's totally different. The comedy world has changed beyond belief. I mean, when I first started, you'd just get up and you'd just have a few ideas and mess about with the audience, and, you know, you'd get booed off, booed back on. And it did, anything, anything used to go, you know, in the early days. And then people started structuring their acts very quickly, and they would study it, and they'd get good in two years, where we used to get good in ten years. And then, uh, and so all kinds of people were coming into the game 
very, very professional, very fast, very slick. So I think the slickness has just taken it to a new level. Um, and now I think now there's a, a resurgence of more originality because I'm, I'm away a lot. So when I come back, I just see the whole comedy thing changing all the time. So now it's kind of got more really original again. There was a time where all the, the comedy clubs that had 15 clubs around the country and these kind of chain comedy clubs, I think they diminished. Mm. And now independent comedy clubs are taking over for the better, I feel, in my personal opinion. It's more creative. Yeah. So when people come out now, I think they're going to get a lot more value for money. Well, we've never had a comedy club in Stoke, so it's great to have these nights on. We have a couple that go on probably once a month, and uh, Damien Larkin's uh, night up at the Regent Theatre is one of them, and it's really, really good, the Laugh Out Loud Comedy Night. And it, it leads us nicely into an advert for that, because you're on first tomorrow at the Regent, alongside Big Lou and Nige. Uh, what are you going to bring to Stoke tomorrow then, Jim? Uh, well, I'm going to bring the funny. I'm going to bring the funny, Terry. Yeah. And then, strangely enough, I've got to go off, actually. Tomorrow I've, ha- I- I've contracted to do two shows, so I'm shooting off to um, Sandbatch Town Hall afterwards as well, trying to get get another one in there as well. That's not far from Congleton Sandbatch, where you used to work. Yeah, it's like I say, it's, it's the Great Northern Run, Terry, so <laughs> I'm just trying to keep it local. I worked in Congleton. I worked in a couple of places. I worked in a bingo ticket manufacturer called Max Press that doesn't <laughs> exist anymore, and also a sportswear place called RH Low, both in the eighties and nineties. So um, <laughs> we could have gone for lunch together. You know what I mean? Back in the day. <laughs> well, I, I, I was. Uh, I used to work in this haulage company, like a van boy, literally when I was seventeen on Youth Opportunities Program. <laughs> and uh, I said to them all when I used to work, there, "Look, I'm going to be a comedian one day." And he said, sure you are, sure you are. My nickname is Donzo, because <laughs> I, I suppose we had ideas about how to do things and uh, how to load, in, load things into a van. And then just when I left, they said, you'll be back, lad, you'll be back. <laughs> so far, uh, well, I'm, so I'm back this Saturday anyway. <laughs> they knew it, they knew you, you were back. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, Jim, for coming on the telephone. I'm going to give the full details now of how you can get tickets for tomorrow. Uh, if you go to the website, www ambassadortickets.com forward slash stoke you can get them there the £12.50 in advance £15 on the door uh, the box office number is 01782 213 800 get yourself up to the region tomorrow for a great night of comedy uh, I will be there and Jim will be there as well <laughs> thanks a lot for coming on the phone yeah, today sure. mate yeah and if any of you guys are not, in, uh, not around on Saturday then I've got all my dates on my website, jimtavere.org, and there's always Twitter and Facebook and all that stuff. Yeah, you're Jim Tavere on Twitter. I've just found you. Give you a tweet out. <laughs> Thank you, Terry. You're yeah. a good man. Thank you very much. We're going to play a song called Addicted to Bass. It could be Addicted to Double Bass. Uh, thank you very much. Broadcasting to Soul Trent and the world. This is Six Towns Radio.